Virgil's got places to be, Patrick. He's on the move. He's training for a marathon. DMC DLC. Uh, whoop. Cattle D. Oh man, Boram. dude, he will. He will Cattle easily. C. He will easily make his 26 miles with moves like that. Uh, this is Virgil's downfall for the Devil May Cry. Perhaps you've heard of it. I, ha I really like this game. Yeah, uh, I would be happy to play more of this, this game. This game is pretty great. Uh, uh, this DLC just came out this week. You play Virgil, as you can see here. I'm in the training. And he plays differently, right? Uh, yeah. So that's kind of one of the uh, one of the biggest selling points of this is that he plays pretty differently from Dante. I mean, obviously, your your kind of like you know teleport to enemy and launch guy in the air, like that stuff's all the same. Um, the constructs of Devil May Cry like the, are just, yeah the, the core the core flow of the combat like kind of launch guys manage you know you've still got your uh, still got some some crowd control like area of effect stuff but the, the way his weapons work also he holds the sword super cool and the jumping is different right uh, yeah so actually this is probably actually a great place to show you uh, all the differences there's a so, bunch of not crazy shit happening yeah all I can just sort of that <laughs> guy's just chilling back there uh, so he can uh, he can dash up. He can dash down. Hmm. Up, down, up. Do you yeah. have you worked that into the flow of your combat I've at never, all? I've never used the down. Oh, okay. Uh, the up can be pretty useful. He's got one move, uh, which see. Well, let me see if I can do it. So you do that, and then you follow it up with that. And Ooh. the higher, so that ground pound, the higher you are, the more damage it does. Sure. So you actually want to be as high as you possibly can be when you do that one. Um, but so the the biggest difference is that like. Uh, like you see how um, my sword changes colors when I do the the left and right trigger stuff. Mm -hmm. Like you're still getting the angel and demon um, framework. You know, it's like the angel obviously is sort of faster, lighter stuff. Uh, demon is like heavier, more damage, slower slashes, that kind of thing. But they don't change weapons. You know, it's all the same weapon. Mm. Uh, so they they seem to have felt a little more liberated to make it do crazy stuff when you're modifying. So like the, the default, just the standard attack in angel mode is that. It's like a it's that's like a, just you hitting X. Yeah, it's, that's just like standing still, and that is the default. There oh, is no wow. like, there's no like five hit combo on the light for that. Interesting. Uh, similarly, like when you hit the launcher button with with demon, you don't get a launcher. You just get this like kind of area of effect, like volcano coming out of the ground thing. Um, so it's not like you have launchers and five hit combos on every weapon. You know, it's right. you're getting a little more. Uh, a little more diversified as you're as you're switching back and forth. And it's the only weapon you, you only have that that's, sword. Yeah, that's, that's okay. the thing. You just have the sword. He just uses it in very different ways. Uh, so I've already beaten it on normal. Kind of want to try. I don't know if it's a good idea. Fuck it. If you don't think it's a good idea, it's probably a great idea. Let's go. Uh, I've got some upgrades and stuff. So he does have an upgrade path. Yeah, all that stuff's the same. Um, just a little more limited because obviously it's not a full game. It's pretty close, actually. Like this is I th this is the, the full list of stuff hmm. that you get, but uh, it's pretty robust. Like it's a lot of design work for them to have done for what is a fairly short, like two three hour add on. Um, how about yeah, I use a lot of that, and so he throws swords instead of using guns. That's or, awesome. Or like kinda, I love that he he throws swords with his mind, as you can see. Well. Like, like, Take what like I can get. Ethereal ghost swords. How about storm swords? That, oh man, that's like a fighting game. Yes. Like forward, forward, A and X. That's gonna be tough. But let's let's give it a shot. Uh, I was right. a big fan of how the combos were pretty simple and the complexity, or I guess the depth rather, came from the amount of the different weapons you yeah, could use yeah. and and how situational those weapons were right. rather than like memorizing a, a 15 button yeah. scheme not really feeling that stuff so if you haven't finished Devil May Cry yet and you want to not be spoiled with the ending stuff you probably shouldn't be watching this yeah yeah don't watch this quick look unless you've already finished the game or you just don't give a shit uh, cuz this picks up right after the end of the game all right you have 3 more seconds to 1 all right, so this is like right after they fight. Okay. At the end of Dante and, and Virgil fight at the end of Devil May Cry. Uh, Brothers are no longer friendly anymore. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Oh, I should have turned on subtitles. Um, Dante betrayed me. So not a lot of not a lot of real time cutscenes in this. That's mostly this kind of motion graphic mm -hmm. stuff, which is kind of a nice change of pace, I guess. Uh, so the end of Devil May Cry. 
Like the world is kind of left irreparably changed where the demons are now known to all of humanity. Right. Yeah, they don't get into any of that in this. This, um, is, uh, this is all Virgil. This game he is... Go Virgil this... goes into a portal. Yeah. And you're you're not quite sure where he goes. Presumably this is where he ended up. And the, the whole thing takes place in, in, in Limbo. Let me see. I don't know subtitles yet. Uh, whoa! Hello! Um, that's not what he looked like the first time. I guess that's a skin I must have unlocked. Hmm. I didn't even think to look at that. He looks like Virgil from the game. Sure. The first time you play through it, I guess is now I'm now I'm super crazy. Demon Super, super Saiyan. Demon Virgil. Demon Virgil something, yeah. Um, but uh, he should play the same. Yeah, whatever. Uh, but yeah, this is this 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 whole thing takes place in limbo. And the story is I'm not gonna call it incoherent, but it's like a lot of weird metaphysical stuff going on, a lot of like philosophizing, you know. So not necessarily a, a of, literal plot extension, yeah, it's yeah. more just it happens to take place. Right, like nothing nothing happens in the real world. Like it does it does sort of like address some of Virgil's like mommy issues, because you know, Eva, the, their mother, was not a character in the core game, but like certainly referenced a lot. A, pl a major like, plot point. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So they kind of get into like, oh, Dante was her favorite, like uh, nobody loves me kind of mm. stuff. Uh... Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if they'll ever make another one of these because who knows how it's selling. Sounds like not super great. Uh, but it's always hard to say because there are a lot of games these days yeah, <laughs> that are not selling super great. So yeah. uh, what exactly that means for the future of well, franchises? Um, yeah, it's hard to say. It'd be a shame, but I but I also I, I really enjoyed where the story ended up, and I, it was one of those. And it's hard to nail, but it was one of those cliffhangers that sets up a world that would be really interesting to explore, but yeah. finish telling the story right. that it wanted yeah, to. Yeah, like that game felt totally complete, but also door wide open to to do some more cool stuff. In, uh, and in a really cool way. Yeah. So so this this whoa. So if you do end up playing the DLC, it, it does it does sort of it sort of solidifies like like you kind of see what the brotherly relationship is going to be at the end of that game, and this just sort of like goes even further in that direction. So. It's nothing mind blowing, but whoop. Uh, I'm not really getting super crazy with my combat here because talking and playing games, man. It's a thing. Um, uh, I, how much did you kind of have to relearn? Like, yeah, your like own? Because my... by the end of Devil May Cry, especially if you're playing on like a higher difficulty, you kind of get in a flow of you know what you feel comfortable with. Right. So how much do, is there like a relearning process? With yeah, the... like I, my muscle memory for this game was gone because uh, it's been a couple months and I've played through a bunch of other games since then. Right. Um, but I mean, it came back pretty quick once I ooh, once I got through uh, a little bit of it. Uh, hang on, let me try to focus on fighting here so I can maybe do some more cool stuff. Let's try that. Oh. Uh, was it right, right, AX? That yeah, that's a uh, storm. That'll burn up some of my. That? I think that was it. Yeah, that was it. That was all right. Um, so you have, uh, so so I've got the devil trigger. I'm kind of surprised they don't call it angel trigger for him, but whatever. Um, I've got that meter up there, but whereas like Dante's was pretty much for, uh, I know there were a couple moves that burned like one block here and there, but mm -hmm. for the most part you used it to just go into devil trigger mode and just fuck shit up, right? Sure. Uh, this one, his, his devil trigger is a lot more about just a bunch of little attacks like I showed you the one I just did that took off one square there's another one I can do that just throws a bunch of swords at a guy huh. um, and let me get into another combat sequence and there's a couple other cool things that you can do with it so because it's all in limbo does this yeah. just allow ninja theory to just go fucking wild and with the level design not not really like it's but it's, it's a lot of this mansion-y kind of stuff um, and sort of surrounding areas. But like the, the kind of the aesthetic of, of this level is pretty much what you're going to see the whole way through. Mm. Some minor variations here and there, and there's one boss fight that takes place in a, in a unique environment that looks pretty cool. Uh, but like clearly not the level of like over the top artistry that was in the the core game. Uh, but it still looks really good. They still they got some new effects like that uh, that, that make it pretty neat. Uh, yeah, I mean part of the real fun of 
Devil May Cry, at least like you know, in terms of the aesthetic, was the playfulness with the real world and yeah. limbo, which this is right. just pure madness. Yeah, they don't they don't really go in that direction too much. I mean, you know, it's a scale issue. It's, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's DLC. Like let's let's face it, DLC is kind of never quite up to the production level of the sixty dollar game. Yeah, not everything is an undead uh, nightmare. Yeah, as much as we would like it. Yeah, it's kind of a shame. I think Undead Nightmare also did not sell well. Ah, that sucks. I think Undead Nightmare and the GTA, or maybe Undead Nightmare did better, but the GTA episodes did not sell yeah. well at all. Those were like 20 bucks, right? They were 20 bucks, and they also came like significantly after the yeah, release of sure. the game. Like, I want to say, I want to say Undead Nightmare actually came that fall, like in that October. Um, oh, it is. Red Dead came in, out in May? Uh, yes. So it didn't, it didn't show me the little, ah, this is a new enemy title there, because this is my second time through this, but that's a new enemy. Mm. Uh, there's two new enemies in this. So, I mean, you know, there, there's some new stuff with the, the levels and the enemies, but uh, clearly, like, the bulk of the work here went into making Virgil a different character. Uh, than, uh, whoa! Than, um, Dante was. Uh, yeah, I've been playing that, uh, whoa, come here, you I'm playing that new Mass Effect DLC also. Mm -hmm. Kind of a big week for DLC releases. It is, and uh, we've got, you know, there's uh, next week, there's uh, the Dead Space 3 DLC. Is that next DLC. week? Jeez. Yeah, March 13th, um, yeah, next week. That, that Mass Effect went also pretty rough around the edges in terms of just, like, basic production values. Mm. But it's also got some, some unique attributes that are pretty cool. Uh, it, it's interesting to see how different studios handle... Uh, like, this doesn't even feel like... Epilogue DLC because I, I felt like Devil May Cry wrapped up yeah. pretty well. Yeah, like this is not really an essential story. Like if they, if and when they make a new one of these, like and if you didn't play this, you'd still kind of would be up to date with the story. No, right. No, no super wild revelations here. Uh, which also appears to be uh, you know the case with the Citadel, um, but not really the case with Dead Space. I, I don't want to get too much into it because I don't want to. Yeah. Uh, talk too much we'll, about Dead Space we'll story. We'll definitely check that out too. Um, but it's interesting to see how different studios handle uh, post-release content that occurs after the timeline of the original game. I, I, I just wonder how those meetings go. Like, the, the ending of Devil May Cry perfectly sets this up. Yeah. It's like, ah, we don't know where Virgil is, so we can go tell a story that fills in some of the character elements of this game without necessarily locking ourselves into what happens in a sequel. Right. So here's another fun trick. Now there's two of me! Ah! Is that one of your standard powers? Or is that yeah, well, that's one of the devil trigger powers. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so it's it's slowly draining the meter up there, as you can see. Um, he sort of fights along with you, but then he'll also, like, if you're taking hits, uh, he will kind of go off and do his own thing and hmm. sort of keep doing damage for you, so that's really useful. Uh, come here. Ow. You said this is like what, three, four hours? Uh, I'd say like three. But uh, obviously, if you're playing these games, uh, if you're a big fan of them, a lot of the appeal is playing at um, you know, multiple difficulties. Yeah. Uh, can I see achievements from here? I don't know. Let's just back out. Um, yeah, they've got uh, they've got the full lineup of difficulty-based achievements that the main game had. So. Uh, uh, what do we got here? So it's like get all the stuff, you know, all the upgrades and everything, get all the lost souls and, and whatnot. Uh, and then it's like, you know, get triple S on the highest normal difficulty and then beat it on all the other difficulties. Oof. So if you want to do everything, you definitely have to play through this several times. Um, let me load up a different level. There's there's six levels. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I think this... Uh, this is the level that we showed on Giant Bomb's brand new releases show every week, Wednesday at something. As we record this from the shrink shrap. Shrink, shrink shrap? Shrink. Shrimp shrap. Shrink shrimp. Rap room. Let's go get some shrimp. Video Game Village. After this. I killed him. Um, yeah, so you know, like I said, it's a lot of... I think this stuff is neat. It's it is. Cool well, yeah, art. yeah. Like the, the art style is, is fine. It feels like it's, we're uh, watching fancy uh, pre-production. Yeah. Or like pre-viz right. uh, stuff. Like story like animated storyboards, yeah. basically. Um, but in terms of the content of the storyline, it's a lot of like Virgil talking to himself and stuff mm. like that. You know, it's not. There's not. It's not especially grounded in any kind of real-world events. Um, 
but I'll just I'll show you what another level looks like a little bit. Uh, how many bosses? Uh, it's just the one boss. Okay. There's the one of the one of those two new enemies is kind of boss like because it's huge and like remember the titans that would charge at you? Sure. Like it's way harder than those things and gotcha. takes more damage than those things. Oh, that's it. Oh, okay. That's the guy. You fight two or three of those things and they are not easy. Uh, so there's, some, I guess, mini boss type characters. And that was that was that was mom's there. So you get a little bit into that stuff. So I mean, you know, some, some cool environments. Some a lot of this yeah, stuff sure. is like rotated 90 degrees. Uh, so the environments are not boring by any stretch. It's just that the kind of the the aesthetic of it is uh, is a lot more consistent from start to finish in this. That whereas the, the the main game had all kinds of stuff going on visually. I think it's cool that they. Developed a completely different character. Yeah, like it's it's, like it's uh, that is above and beyond the Call of Duty with this sort of stuff. Like having having just the vaguest idea of how much work goes into like balancing all these moves and creating them and then implementing all this stuff. Like this is this is pretty impressive. Like clear, clearly implementing Dante, telling a similar story with a few new moves it probably would have been a lot less work. Yeah, totally, totally. So this is like this is a whole new character. Like he plays totally differently. Here's a. Uh, the last Devil Trigger ability uh, is this. Ah. And that, that just takes up four blocks, but it's just like... That's pretty awesome, it's, though. It's fucking, it tears stuff up. Like, basically, every, stuff is just taking damage from those things as you... Like, you could just stand here and let it chop stuff up. That seems like pretty excellent crowd control. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that'll that'll get you through a big mess of enemies real fast. Um, and you can... Uh, can you so turn? it just keeps going until, like... I think that one... Because it takes the initial four blocks. The, the doppelganger you can turn off and it'll stop draining, but I think that just stays until it basically has a, a set number of hits, hmm. uh, and I'll just keep it until it, it hits enemies all the. Uh, That's really cool. That many times, yeah. So, uh, so this is nine bucks. Uh, it's out on the consoles. I'm not clear what's going on with Steam. I know it's out in Europe on Steam. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely coming to the PC it's, version, which by all accounts seems to be the version. Oh, that's definitely the one to play if you're if you haven't played this yet. But uh, seems like it runs like beautifully even on like yeah, lower end PCs. It, it apparently screams, but uh, it's nine bucks. But if you if you pre-order this game on consoles, you got to, supposedly got a code for it for free. Hmm. Uh, so a lot of people should just be able to get this. Uh, Assuming you know GameStop printed your code out on your receipt or whatever. Sure. Uh, but yeah, this, this is Virgil's downfall. Uh, it's, it's not bad. You know, if you want more Devil May Cry, like you I could, want some more Devil May Cry. You could absolutely do worse than this. Um, yeah, you could play Devil May Cry too. Ah. Ugh. Let's not even go there. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Brad. Thank you.